What's up, fat hoe? You want smooth butter like this? I know you do, because who doesn't want smooth butter like this? This is not your normal uh, graph animation, right? I like to add a little bit of flair to my animation sometimes. I don't like to just have the boring old, here. This is, this is what normal animations look like, right? Boring. This is what my animation looks like. That is beautiful. Absolutely stunning. Who would have thought that you could make a square look so fascinating and amazing and exciting you could you could sell this right now for a billion dollars uh but anyways let's get into the animation so how did i do this well oops i just hit my microphone but who cares i like animations that are i like animations that are a bit expressive you know like kind of like Disney animations, you know, it has, it has a little bit of life into it, right? So the way I achieved this is by doing what is an overshoot. Um, so I'm basically bringing out my animation further than it needs to be. So it has to bounce back into position, but I'm not just doing an overshoot with the position. You see the position, I only have two keyframes right here. So what I did was add a warp to my square here. And I added the bulge. I just, I kind of just pick random ones and see what looks good. Um, and the keyframes here are kind of the important part because most people, they don't really approach keyframes the way that I do. I think of it as kind of like a mathematical expression. Um, most things in nature that are beautiful have a pattern to it. So I make sure my keyframes are equal intervals apart. So this is like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve 10, 12 keyframes apart. And the way I do this animation is I start the first keyframe with the number that I want it to be at, right? So the it, this is going to be the overshoot number. Uh, it's going to return to zero eventually at the end, you know, when it returns to its homeostasis, its base position. Uh, but this is going to be overshoot, overshoot by 10, right? So we're going to slowly, all right, if you think about how a bounce works, a bounce, it's going to, let me open up this thing here. So bounce, it's going to start by having a high amplitude or bouncing high, right? And then each time it's a little bit less high, a little bit less high. And just like that, or overshoot is kind of the same thing, except you don't have this base right here. So overshoot is going to be bam high. And then it's going to go low, but not as low as it went high and then high, but not as high as it went low the last time. And each time until bam, it's nothing, right? So that's what we're basically going to do here. We're going to start high at 10. Then we're going to go lower. Uh, so negative five. So you see how negative five is or five is less than 10. But we're going to so we're going to do half of what we did before, but just make it negative. And then we're going to do half of that, make it positive. Half of that, make it negative. And then you're back at zero. And then you have this beautiful animation. Uh, so later.